So in the last video, we learned how to retrieve historical stock data from third-party services such as Yahoo, IEX Cloud, and Alpaca. We downloaded data from these sources for a given stock ticker, for instance, Apple, and we saved this raw data to a CSV file in a, in a format that's suitable to chart a candlestick chart. So we have a date, an open, a high, a low, and a close for every day for the year 2019. So let's go ahead and start using this data um, so how do we actually chart this data? We're, we're going to use Plotly, which is a popular graphing library for Python, and it actually has a candlestick chart uh, functionality built in so that we can draw these figures. And uh, it's going to make it really easy, e really easy to uh, write this code. In very few lines of code, we can point it at our CSV file and then load a data frame and chart this data. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, I have the candlestick chart uh, page open here. Um, in case we need to reference it, but I'm going to start a new uh, new Python script. And so I have the stock data repository. And remember, you can uh, get uh, all the code we have from the finance hacks repository here. Um, we have historical data, and we're going to write the code that's in this chart.py. Okay, so at the root level here, I'm going to create chart.py. And we have all of our CSV files from the previous video um, stored already. And so I'm going to go ahead and start writing the code we need for Plotly. So for Plotly, you're going to need to import the graph objects as geo. And this is pretty much straight from the documentation. You want to import pandas, which we've already installed the dependency for because it's in our requirements.txt. And then I'm also going to want to uh, load um, all of our data into a data frame. So I'm going to do df for data frame equals pandas dot read CSV. So pandas has a function read CSV, and you can pass it the name of a CSV file, and it will load it into a pandas data frame. So I have stock.csv, so that's my Apple CSV, and I'm just going to print that out and see what it looks like. So I'm going to do Python 3, and I'm going to run chart.py. And so you see it's loaded all of our data into a pandas data frame. We have 250 rows and five columns. So there's 250 days that the market was open and that we have data for Apple. So it's from January through December 27th. So it's great. That was easy. We have the data frame. And now how do we draw the chart? So there's actually this candlestick chart object here. And so I'm just going to copy it from here. So we just create a new figure. And so go.figure and data. And so we create a candlestick. And just to clean this up a little bit, I'm going to put this on its own line. So there's this candlestick uh, constructor here. And let's go ahead and map it to our data frame. So we actually have it all lowercase, date, open, high, low, close. So we're going to do um, data frame date. And then we'll have data frame open. So date open equals data frame open. And then we'll do high, and we'll do the low and the close. So if you look at these parameters, x, this is our x axis. So we're going to have the dates along the bottom of the chart. And then our candlestick is going to be drawn based on the opening and closing prices and the high and low um, for, uh, so that'll form the y axis, uh, the, the prices for Apple stock. So we have this candlestick object and then we can just pass it in as data here. And then all we have to do, once we have a figure and a candlestick object, we can do figure.show. And just like that, I run that, and it says candlestick is not defined. So what did I do here? Oh, I didn't assign it to a variable. So now I have a variable called candlestick. And notice how easy that was. It actually fires off a web browser for me temporarily. And so it creates JavaScript here and draws this chart. And now I have a nice candlestick chart um, based on this January through December range. And so this is uh, the chart of Apple. And I can hover over any given uh, candlestick and see uh, the data for that given uh, candle. And you notice we also have this cool range slider here. So if I want to zoom in on a particular area of interest, I can zoom in. And so I'll set this range. And we can see what happened on any given date. So I can go to May here, and you can see 
Um, something happened around this point around uh, May 7th. So that's like an area of interest where the stock fell. So what else can we do with this chart? Well, let's try to figure out uh, what news events caused uh, this price to change dramatically. So you see at the beginning, there was this big gap down. So something happened there. And you see around the beginning of May, something happened that caused the stock to go way down right there. You also see here where it started to hit new highs and then it went way down again. And then also you can kind of see where this candle here, you see this long shadow here, but then it went way up after that. And so it finished the rest of the year very strong. So how do we go about um, putting some annotations and shapes on there? Or how do we go about saving this to a file? What else can we do with this chart? So I'm gonna go in here. And so you, now you see that we are, we're showing the chart, but let's pretend you wanna save this file. There's also another method called um, figure.writeHTML. And you can actually tell it to write this as an HTML file. And let's do that. So chart.py, we run it again, and you'll see it actually generates an apple.html file for us. And this, if we want to publish this chart on the web, we can do that. And so I'll do auto open equals true. So it'll write the HTML file and actually create a static web page where it can be charted. So one thing that's hard to notice here, but if you zoom in, I'm gonna only show January. So I'm gonna zoom all the way down and you'll notice there's all these little gaps. So what's this? There's nothing here, there's nothing there. That's because the stock market is closed on the weekends, obviously. And so there's no data points there and it kind of makes our chart look funny because there's no, no data points to show. So there's an extra parameter I can use here and it's, uh, you can go figure.layout.xaxis.type equals category. And now if I run it again, we'll open our HTML file. And now the chart looks a little bit better. If we zoom in, um, you'll see it writes out the dates and it's only showing the dates that the market uh, was open. So that gives us a little bit clearer picture of what's going on and this is a, this is a better chart here. Um, and then if, and if you zoom in on any one of the candles, uh, you can also see it generates this JavaScript for you. And so you can see what happened on any given day. So you see January 2nd and then January 3rd, it gapped way down, opened at 150 and then closed at 144. And so something happened on that day. So how would we go about uh, drawing some annotations and to mark particular areas of interest on the chart. Because a lot of times when you're drawing a stock chart, it's not only for yourself, maybe you want to share it with someone else or make a note or you know really highlight something on the chart. So you can do that with um, shapes and annotations. So I'm gonna copy that code from our GitHub repository that we always already have. And you see, I have this shapes list and this annotations list. And if I copy that, um, I picked out some areas of interest on the chart to highlight. So I picked some particular days to mark on the chart that looked like they were trend reversal days and kind of tried to match them up to the news to see what happened that may have caused that trend reversal. So here are the days I picked for Apple. We have January 2nd, May 5th, July 30th, and October 30th. So if you look on January 2nd, that was actually the day that Apple made a sales guidance cut. So they said demand was weakening for the iPhone, the stock went way down. What's funny is that I actually ended up being the best time of the year to buy Apple stock and it went up 100% for the rest of the year. Now what happened on May 5th, you may have remembered uh, the market was going up, reaching new highs, and then Trump sent out a couple of tweets to escalate the trade war with China. So this is May 5th, and you'll see uh, he said a bunch of stuff about how he's increasing the tariffs and starting this trade war or escalating the trade war that was already going on, and that spooked the market, stock tanked. Then on July 30th, uh, things had already started recovering for a bit, and then there was another uh, series of China trade war uh, tweets. Uh, he was saying, China's doing very badly, our economy had become much larger, blah, blah, blah. Talks a bunch of shit about China, market panics again. And then October 30th is the other day of interest. Uh, Apple re reports fourth quarter re results and people are wondering whether uh, the trade war is having a big impact on Apple iPhone sales or not. Turns out they made $12.5 billion on service revenue 
and set uh, new records and earnings, and the stock just rocketed up after that. So, so I'm copying four lines. These shapes are lines that we're drawing on our chart, and we're drawing them at certain x-axis positions. So we're drawing them at January 2nd, May 5th, July 30th, and October 30th. And then annotations is like the text label that we're writing on the chart. And so we're putting them at the same spot on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we're kind of positioning uh, relative to the size of the uh, stock chart canvas. Um, I'm positioning those uh, annotations to appear so that they don't overlap the chart too much. So I'll show you what that means in a minute. So once you have a list of shapes and annotations, you just need to add them to the figure. So we already have this figure layout. So now we have figure and we can call update layout. And you can give it a few things. The first we're gonna give it is a title. So I'll call this chart Apple Stock 2019. And then we just pass in the annotations and we pass in our shapes, equals shapes. And now if we draw it again, I'm gonna run this. Okay, I made one small update. I changed May 5th to May 6th. Uh, just because you need to pick a data point that actually has a candle on the chart so that this line can be drawn. So I'm gonna draw this chart again and run it. And you'll see we have apple cutting guidance January 2nd. So if I zoom in, you see this gap down that happened right after that. You also see the Trump tariffs tweet here um, where the market was up but then went down for a few weeks for the month of May. And you also see the re-escalation of the trade war on the chart and also Apple Q4 earnings getting announced and it running for the rest of the year. So that's it for this video. We've downloaded historical data from Alpaca, IEX Cloud, and Yahoo Finance. And we've shown how to load that data into a data frame and chart it using Plotly. And we have this nice candlestick chart that we can either publish on the web, uh, show our friends, or we can even use some of these things like download plot as PNG. Um, it gives us a lot of useful tools for creating these charts with not a lot of code. So thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next video. We have a lot more to come. Thanks a lot.